In 1989, Takeshi Kitano was a household name in Japan, well known as a comedian and television host. Then he did something unexpected. He directed and starred in a series of violent, nihilistic crime dramas, shocking Japanese audiences and building an international cult following. Kitano's thematically linked Yakuza trilogy begins with 1989's Violent Cop, about a Dirty Harry-esque police officer on a rampage against crime, and also includes 1990's Boiling Point, about a pair of amateur baseball players and their run-in with an unstable Yakuza, before finishing up with 1993's Sonatine. Throughout these films, Kitano reinterprets gangster movie tropes, creating a uniquely nihilistic tone where sudden, inevitable violence sits side by side with absurd comedy where chance moments of cause and effect take place without regard to narrative sense, and where the mercurial Kitano sits at the centre of the storm. Sonatine marked the beginning of Kitano's international recognition, screening in the Uncertain Regard section at the Cannes Film Festival. It features Kitano as Murakawa, a Yakuza boss bored with his criminal lifestyle. He's assigned a job in Okinawa, mediating a clan dispute. Suspecting a setup, he goes ahead with it regardless, with a gaggle of young Yakuza tagging along. When a spate of attacks leaves his team decimated, he takes the survivors and holds up in a seaside hideout. At home in Tokyo, Murakawa is surrounded by wealth and women, but his world is nevertheless sterile. The Yakuza meet in a series of drab, fluorescent-lit rooms, separated from the warmth and noise of the real world. On the beach, he and the other Yakuza seem to regress. They become obsessed with playing pranks and games. Some of these games are surprisingly childlike, while others are disturbingly violent. The games that the characters play reflect the performative, ritualized violence of the Yakuza. Throughout the film, activities are continually rehearsed and repeated. Murakawa builds a miniature wrestling ring out of paper, then watches his underlings wrestle on the beach. A traditional performance in a restaurant is drunkenly mocked and restaged repeatedly. Even Murakawa's bathroom assault of a fellow Yakuza seems to prefigure clan warfare later in the film. Through staging and restaging these activities, Kitano draws a line between their ritualized elements and the intimidation and violence the Yakuza engage in. In Murakawa's world, there's little difference between digging a hole on the beach for someone to fall in and accidentally drowning a club owner while intimidating him. Death is ultimately cheap, and that means violence is something to play with. Violence recurs throughout Sonatine, often flaring up suddenly, with gunshots firing out of nowhere. It's a fact of life in the Yakuza world, and frequently played for humour as well as for tension. The perpetrators of violence are depersonalised. Few of the opposing Yakuza are named, or even featured more than once. When an explosion kills Murakawa's men, the bombers don't even show up on screen. It's also rare to see Murakawa fully engaged with the action. Instead, he's usually shown in separate shots, a blank stare on his face. This isn't just the calm, cool remove of a seasoned killer. Kitano portrays Murakawa as less of a participant and more of an observer. He watches violent events from a distance, his facial expression limited and body language static. Alain Delon, whose turn as an emotionally reserved killer in Le Samurai is frequently linked to Sonatine, supposedly remarked of Kitano that this is not an actor. He only has free facial expressions, and he almost doesn't talk on top of this. But Murakawa's shallow affect is key to understanding the film. His lack of interest in the violence around him reflects the film's chaotic, nihilistic worldview, and perhaps further the response of viewers to violence in film more generally. Murakawa's lack of reaction strips the violent scenes of their voyeuristic appeal, and his removal from the action doubly so. Even a major shootout is shown from a distance, the camera looking up at the windows of a hotel as muzzle flash lights up its darkened rooms. Sonatine's nihilistic tone stretches beyond its dispassionate action sequences. The film's touches of absurd humour link to a deeper absurdity of action. Nothing in the story seems to happen on purpose. 
characters' plans continuously fail and possible set pieces are subverted. A young Yakuza runs into an enemy clan building to drop a grenade, only to find out it's a dud. When plans do succeed, it tends to be by chance. A visit to a hotel to catch an enemy ends up at the wrong room, only to run into him in the lift. And throughout the film, characters go through with approaches that they know will fail. There's a fatalism to Sonatine. Events carry on towards a terminal conclusion, and Murakawa continues forward without hope. By deadening the impact of graphic violence, by filling runtime with repeated childlike and brutal games, and by undermining narrative tropes with absurd elements, Kitano turns the gangster movie on its head. But it's his performance as Murakawa, the bored, perfunctory, restless Yakuza, whose blank-eyed stare bores into the viewer minute by minute, that makes Sonatine truly unforgettable.